so much, uh, Sheila. It's a pleasure and a privilege to come down and uh, support Tom on this uh, eve of election uh, rally uh, tonight. Um, I actually started my working life out on Filton uh, Airfield 40 odd years ago, so going back to Bristol is not uh, uh, something that's strange. Um, and, and therefore is, is a pleasure as, as well. But coming back to support someone who, um, without whom, um, an election tomorrow in Bristol, and for that matter, the by-election taking place in Manchester Central, where I was uh, last night, or in Rotherham, Middlesbrough, where we will be in a couple of weeks' time, would be no contest, uh, no choice elections, because of the overlapping agenda between the three main parties that you cannot get a cigarette paper between them now when it comes to their support for austerity. What Paul here was saying uh, effectively about the crash and crisis five years ago in the financial system, the bailout by all sorts of uh, governments of European and other uh, countries and all of them seeking to make the price for that bailout paid by ordinary working uh, uh, people. And why we are here uh, tonight is that we're going to put on notice all the main parties in this uh, country that they've taken working class people for granted for too long. Working class people have had no opportunity to vote uh, in a mass way for anti-austerity candidates. We hope that the trade unionist and socialist coalition over the next year or two to give them that opportunity and to put on notice the main parties that we're not putting up with their uh, agenda of Austerity. They seek to publish the victims of the crash of the last five years. We seek to publish the villains. And the victims are us, our families and the people in the areas that we live. The ones who have been made unemployed. The wage freezes, as John has mentioned, for many public sector workers for four years. The ones on the edge of retirement, facing much less secure retirement because of changes to pension policies. The ones who, just in the last few months, because of new tests brought in, the changeover of benefits, for example, from incapacity benefit to the employment support allowance, where now 75% of people in receipt of that supplementary benefit for those who've got uh, 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 an incapacity have lost that benefit by testing by Atos, the French uh, medical services firm which is conducting the assessments in the transfer over to ESA. And who brought in ATOS? Maybe the Tories are prosecuting it. It was the Labour government who introduced that change both in the benefit structure and in the, uh, the testing. To the point now where, as I say, 36% of those being tested by ATOS will lose the benefit entirely and 39% are put on a reduced uh, rate in that transfer uh, uh, information. Of course, it isn't the same for everyone. Executives at the top of main companies have seen their, their benefits, their pay, rise by 27% over the last uh, uh, 12 months. The top 100 companies in this country, if you watch the telly and you see the stock market figures coming on, that's done from a thing called the FTSE 100, the Financial Times Stock Exchange Top 100 Companies. Their lifetime packages, including their pensions and their bonuses and so on, <coughs> rose by, the people who run those companies, rose by 80% in the last uh, 12 months. It's not just in the last uh, 12 months. I want to make towards the end of my uh, contribution why what we're trying to build here, important as it is, to challenge austerity each and every election, such as Tom is doing in this mayoral uh, election. What we're trying to build here is literally the fight of our lives, a generational transformation in what working people have and have grown to expect from society, which has been taken away uh, 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 from us. And the big companies have been on the telly the last uh, few uh, days, the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, making a mockery of we're all in this together. Because the water companies aren't all in this together. Starbucks ain't all in this together. Google and Amazon aren't all in together. They're making uh, 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 profits and then by a scheme of transfer pricing, and it's put on the news and news night and so on. It's something that's been going on for years. I mean, I can remember 40 years ago in Coventry, Chrysler exporting cars at a loss from Britain and declaring a loss to the Labour uh, uh, government in the mid 1970s, declaring a profit in Switzerland where it then re exported the cars because in Switzerland it paid a much lower uh, rate of tax. 
Starbucks is doing exactly the same. It claims to buy its coffee from uh, uh, Brazil. Not that they grow much coffee. Sorry, they're from uh, uh, Switzerland. Not that they grow much uh, coffee in, uh, in Switzerland. But they're on something like a 12% uh, uh, equivalent of corporation tax compared to the 23, 24% uh, of the, uh, the Tory uh, government. But where did those ideas come from? It's worth just digging for one minute into the real story of Starbucks and the Public Accounts uh, Committee and its uh, 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 chair at the moment. Because when in March this year, Osborne announced reductions in corporation uh, tax and new technical changes which allowed those who register their profits in subsidiaries in other uh, countries to get away with something like an extra billion pounds a year in that transfer pricing and the reduction of corporation tax saving something like five billion pounds a year for those same uh, companies each year in uh, Britain. Where did they get that idea from? Well all the Tories have actually done is implement a policy that was drawn up in the last couple of years of the Labour government when the Labour government set up in the Treasury working groups to work out what the corporation levels and types of taxation should be in Britain. And who did they ask to sit on the working group for transfer pricing and taxes? They asked Vodafone, Shell, Diageo, Tesco, G4S, International Power and BHP Bill. They drew up the plans which Osborne then announced in March. And just to make sure that they got those plans correct. For the 20 months before the budget announcement this uh, year about the system by which now Starbucks and the rest are getting away with the taxes that you've seen on the, the T uh, uh, V, <coughs> then the Treasury seconded from International Corporate Tax Accountants KPMG a senior manager called Robert Edwards to marshal that Labour working group policy into an actual series of amendments for the budget. And what was his job title at KPMG? He advised multinationals on tax efficient cross-border financing and restructuring. So this is not an accident what's happened. Both main parties in the last few years have allowed the restructuring of the biggest companies in this country to either push their profits abroad to cheaper taxes or get away with paying taxes in this country. And you get Margaret Hodge yesterday morning coming on the, uh, 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 the radio and the TV saying we should support uh, a boycott of uh, Starbucks. I'm not against uh, boycotts if there's genuine uh, mass pressure against any of these uh, 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 big firms. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on. Margaret Hodge, is this the same Margaret Hodge whose father started a steel trading firm, which is now run by her brother, in which she's a major shareholder, which had sales in the UK last year of £2.1 billion of steel trading and paid £163,000 in corporation tax? Why should we believe these people in the Commons have any genuine intention to make the rich really pay in uh, the society. Clearly, they, uh, they don't. It's a smokescreen. The whole actions of the, uh, the government in bringing forward the uh, economic austerity agenda at the moment is to use the fact that there is no alternative explanation to this we're all in it together austerity package put forward by all the three main uh, uh, parties and to use that as John has said to uh, uh, under the cover of that to bring forward more attacks on trade union rights and facility time and organisational uh, structures within the unions and so on despite the fact there's clearly plenty of money in this uh, country to sort out any of the other problems. The banks went belly up five years ago when I was a kid uh, in the 60s growing up trying to work out the banking system but dead simple. The banks, if they had a pound in the vaults, could lend you a fiver, up to a fiver, for a mortgage. By the time these banks went belly up five years ago, because of gambling and speculation, not lending money in order to buy goods for trade, for export and import, but lending money to people who were better, not even on the price of grain in six or twelve months' time, but on the price of the dollar in 2.3 seconds' time. Because most of the money that circulates around the world in the financial system now is in microseconds gambling or what the value of currencies and shares and so on are going to be seconds away. And when they went belly up, the pound that they had in the vault, they were lending 50 to 60 pounds against those real assets. Sheer gambling and speculation. Now if I put a fiver on a horse race yesterday 
at Ladbrokes and it went down. And I came back to you and said, I'm sorry, I've lost my five pound bet. Would you bail me out and tell me to bob off? <coughs> we should be doing exactly the same to those banks who through their gambling and speculation have caused hundreds of billions of pounds of loss, which Labour and then the Tories have bailed out these banks and now they want our nursing homes, our NHS, our schools and houses, our young people's wages, our pensions, our jobs to pay for that uh, uh, crisis. We need to build the sort of electoral alternative that uh, shows there is an alternative to that uh, uh, argument. And today's an important day. As Volker has said, the demonstrations across <laughs> Southern Europe, it's also important, by the way, there were mass, uh, uh, sorry, the strikes across Southern Europe, mass demonstrations in Poland, uh, in Slovakia, in Slovenia, and Romania as well uh, today in support of those strikes taking place uh, in, uh, in Southern Europe. And industrial action is the key, obviously, to, to throwing back the Tory uh, plans, which is why it is no accident that when John spoke at the TUC uh, Congress taking place in Brighton a couple of weeks ago, Motion 5, which was moved by the General Secretary of the Prison Officers Association, seconded by the General Secretary of the RMT, and the first speaker from the floor was John, the Vice President of the PCS, that all those three individuals are members of the steering committee of Tusk, because they recognise we cannot go into this battle fighting with one hand tied behind our backs. That even if you can win and push and move the Tories off the course with industrial action, if the next election comes out and your only choice is three parties offering the same uh, diet of uh, cuts, not differing an, an inch in the direction they want to take us, but perhaps only uh, a month or a year or two in the speed by which they want those cuts to be uh, implemented, we need an, an electoral uh, uh, alternative uh, 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 to that. Now, we used to have uh, something that we could rely on to a certain extent uh, in, in the parties that we had, say, 20 or 30 years ago. When Mrs Thatcher ran the Tories in the 80s, she came for council public uh, uh, spending in a big uh, uh, way. And we had 20 Labour councillors, uh, 20 Labour councils in uh, 82, 83, met together and decided to resist the Tories' uh, plans. Regretfully, at the end of the battle, three years later, only two stood the test of time. That was Lambeth and Liverpool. Liverpool in particular, still if you go up to that uh, city, you can see 5,000 uh, houses with gardens front and back, new schools, new uh, parks, new uh, uh, sports centres that were built by the money which the socialists on Liverpool Council in the mid-1980s won off the Tories by the battle that they uh, put up. This time, we haven't got 20 Labour councils that are resisting the cuts. Regretfully, we haven't got 20 Labour councillors that are resisting the cuts. You can count on the fingers of one hand the Labour councillors on Labour authorities that have resisted the cuts over the last 12 months. One in York resigned. One in Barking resigned. One in Lambeth, an executive member of my union, Unite, abstained in the Labour free meeting before the actual budget meeting took place. And for that, he was suspended from the Labour group. He's now decided to go back into the Labour group. I think the consequence of that is he'll have to vote for cuts the next time a budget uh, decision comes. And two, the most important two so far, in Southampton, Two Labour councillors refused to vote for the cuts in their area and the closure of a swing mass in their uh, ward. They founded a group on the Southampton Council, uh, Labour councillors against the cuts they've now been disciplined by the Labour Party. We need to build an alternative to that. So a couple of years ago, this Trade Unions and Socialist Coalition was uh, founded. We've got the official support of the NUT. We've got executive members, as has been mentioned, from the PCS, from the Prison Officers Association, from the NUT, from uh, uh, other uh, uh, unions as, uh, as, as well. <coughs> uh, we're standing in a few by-elections at the uh, moment, but the big test is going to be next year. In this city, and in areas where 24 million people live in this country, there will be council elections next uh, May for some uh, uh, three or 4,000 council uh, uh, seats. We're not visible in most of these contests. Uh, when they take place, they only <coughs> interview or look at the parties that have already got representation in Parliament or in the council. That's why it's so difficult to break her through. We've had discussions with the BBC. We've been told that if we can stand 400 candidates in the council elections of next May, we will become at least a recognised player in those uh, coverage by the BBC in those elections. So that's the target. 
we've set ourselves, and Roger, my glamorous assistant, was passing amongst you with forms uh, as I first uh, got up, because we need to get some resources in order to make that a reality over the next uh, a few months. Well, asking for a fortune, but if you're in work, and I thought a pound or perhaps two pound a month on a standing order, a pound is threatened a week, sorry, it's threatened a day. Uh, if you could make something like that before we leave this meeting uh, uh, tonight to fill out the form and hand them in to us at the end, that would be much, uh, much uh, appreciated. Voting for Tom tomorrow, voting for a Tusk candidate in these elections is not, and I don't suppose anybody who's taken the trouble to come out of this meeting tonight who thinks in this way, is not going to be a wasted vote. Voting for one of the three main parties in this election would be a, vote, a, a wasted uh, vote, given that they all agree with the uh, austerity plans of the, uh, of the uh, government. But voting for Tom would do a number of things. Firstly, it would show other people that there are a body of opinion within uh, Bristol which is not prepared to see the, uh, the cuts. Were Tom to be elected uh, tomorrow night, I can foresee what his first act would be on, the, on Friday. He would immediately set up in this building a unit that would organise meetings in every working class community of uh, Bristol, in every uh, working class uh, estate, with the trade unions in the, uh, the city, and, and a genuine consultation and dialogue. What are the needs of people in this city? For care homes, for housing, for schools, for transport, for apprenticeships, for jobs, for young people. What are the needs of this city? And then a mayor's conference in the new year to bring all those ideas uh, uh, together. Then to draw up a budget based on the real needs of the people in Bristol. And then to go fight the politicians in Westminster to get the money to make sure that Bristol could have the things that working people uh, need. That's the sort of uh, uh, future that uh, uh, Tusk is trying to uh, uh, organise by building an electoral uh, alternative across the uh, country. Now I've got three minutes left and I want to make one last uh, uh, point in this uh, three minutes. I said earlier on uh, it was a generational challenge that we're uh, involved uh, in. I, uh, as also mentioned, uh, grew up in the 50s and the, the 60s. And the world I grew up in had a number of different anchors that are not present today. First, as I said, you can tell roughly the difference. The Tories were for them, Labour was for us. Boats and for all, you can see difference between political parties. You can't see that uh, now. My dad was a fitter in the steelworks for 43 years. We ran cleaned the floors in uh, a branch of what's now uh, of Barclays. Most working class families more or less got by on one main wage coming in and a bit of pin money, as they called it, from a second wage. I don't know anybody now, or any working class families, that don't need two wages to make sure the rent or the mortgage or a holiday for the kids can be uh, uh, obtained. And that's not an accident. In the period after the Second World uh, War, the so-called uh, post-war uh, 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 boom, the economy uh, grew, but so did the strength of the trade unions. Trade union membership in this country by the mid-1970s reached a peak of nearly 13 million. I've got a graph here you can look at that, uh, later, so I'm running short of time, I'm not going to use too many more visual uh, uh, aids, which has got two parts to it. One is the rise of trade union membership to the mid-1970s, and then regretfully, for reasons we can go into another time, the decline that's taken place down to about 7 million today. And the reverse of that uh, graph is the share of the top 1% of this country in the wealth produced each year, which went down as working people got better uh, uh, organised. By 1973, the share of the wealth created in this country each year, which went to the wages of ordinary working people, who then paid taxes into the, uh, the government, reached a maximum of 63% of GDP in this country. That's what gave us the National Health Service. That's what gave us mass council house building programme. That's what gave us a comprehensive education system. And ever since then, Thatcher and the sons of Thatcher, Major, Blair and Brown, have been part of a process to take that away from us. Now the amount of the GDP that goes to working class people in this country is 51%. They want to go it further. So we have to build an industrial resistance against austerity which seeks to make ordinary working people pay for a crisis that is not of their making. But not just what we're against. We have to build a sort of electoral alternative that can inspire people again of what we want to see uh, achieved. We want every young person to have the chance of a free education without tuition fees or without loans. We want training schemes and jobs at the end of your school, your education or your uh, training, guaranteed that you go into, not to have the best trained dull queue in Europe. We want decent, warm, dry housing for everybody. We want a care home at the end of our lives where our old folk 
can be looked at in the public sector, not privatised out where he can make uh, a profit. We want enough wages in our pocket so we can pay our way in the world, have a holiday with our uh, uh, families. We want the re return of the wealth that's created by ordinary working people. That's socialism. That's sharing out what wealth is made by ordinary people for the needs for them and their family. And there's only one serious socialist candidate in this election tomorrow, and that's Tom. There's only one electoral project that's serious of rooting itself in the organisations and the communities of the working class, and that's the trade unionist and socialist coalition. The gaffers have got three parties. It's about time we had one of our own. Vote for Tom tomorrow. Help us build Tusk. Thanks very much. For